Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. We talk a lot about earbuds around here and since streaming is the most convenient way to feed those earbuds with music these days, I thought it was about time we had a look at some of the most popular music streaming services such as Amazon Music, Apple Music, Deezer, Kobuz, Spotify and Tidal. Let's see what each of them can offer and how much they cost. Strictly alphabetically speaking, Amazon Music is the first. Amazon's streaming service has more than 70 million songs in its library, so it's a huge one. There are multiple tiers you can choose from when it comes to subscribing. First there is the Amazon Music free plan, where you can listen to different online radio stations and playlists with ads. In this case you don't have any control over what particular songs you are listening to, and in what order, it's really like listening to a radio. So if you don't want such limitations, you can upgrade to Amazon Music Unlimited, which costs 10 euros, dollars or pounds a month, but you can get 30 days of free trial, and if you already have an Amazon Prime subscription, the price is only 8 euros, dollars or pounds. But to keep things simple, from now on I think I will refer to the prices in euros only, as all subscriptions cost roughly the same in dollars and pounds. And please keep in mind that all these details, such as prices, plans, the size of the music libraries, and some features can and will change over time, so these numbers only reflect the actual situation as of making this review at the end of January 2021. But back to the Amazon Music Unlimited, in this mid-tier plan you have access to MP3 quality files at a bitrate of 320 kilobit per second. If you want higher quality sound, you can add an extra 5 euros and get Amazon Music HD. So for 15 euros you will get access to 7 million tracks in CD quality, which means 16-bit 44 kHz FLAC files at a bitrate of up to 850 kilobit per second, and there are also a couple of million songs available in high-res or ultra HD as Amazon calls it. These are 24-bit 192 kHz files with bitrates of up to 3700 kilobit per second. If you don't really know what these numbers mean, then don't worry, basically the bigger the number, the better the sound quality. Larger files sizes generally mean less compression, which results in more data, more musical detail and better dynamics. Well, maybe it's a bit more complicated than that, but for the purpose of this video, that's more than enough for you to know. If you are somebody who understands all this, then I won't need to explain the differences between different formats and bitrates anyway, so let's get back to Amazon Music one more time. In the highest tier, you get access to not only HD and Ultra HD quality tracks, but to Amazon 3D as well, which means Dolby Atmos Audio and Sony 360 Reality Audio tracks. So if you are still with me, Amazon Music has a smartphone app for both iOS and Android, and it also offers desktop apps for Windows and macOS, and there is a web player available as well. Amazon Music is supported on Alexa-enabled devices and it works well with AirPlay and Chromecast. All major audio hardware companies and smart TVs support Amazon Music now, and it even runs on some smartwatches such as certain models from Garmin. Moving on to Apple Music, it is Apple's own streaming platform with 60 million songs in its library. There is no free option available, however there is a 3 months free trial and then it will cost you 9.99 a month. That is unless you choose the family option, which is 15 euros and up to 6 people can use it, but it requires iCloud family sharing, which costs an extra 2.99 or 9.99 depending on the size of the shared storage, so there is some extra cost. In terms of streaming quality, Apple Music tops out at 256 kilobit per second, which doesn't sound much, but thanks to the AAC codec, which is Apple's own format, its quality is actually decent enough. As an Apple service, which is using Apple's own audio format, it naturally works best with other Apple products. It's integrated into iOS and macOS, and it works seamlessly with your Apple Watch, Apple TV or HomePod as well. However, it has an Android app and Windows app as well, and you can use the web player too on any platform. You can also easily use Apple Music with any AirPlay compatible device, so that makes it accessible on almost any AV and smart device. Next up is Deezer, with no less than 56 million songs in its library. There are four different plan options, starting with Deezer Free, which has ads and some limitations similar to Amazon Music. To get rid of these restrictions, you have to upgrade to Deezer Premium for 10 euros a month, with 3 months of free trial. You can stream MP3s at a bitrate of 320 kilobit per second for this price. If you want higher quality, 16-bit 44 kHz streaming at a bitrate of up to 1411 kilobit per second, you have to pay 15 euros to get Deezer 
Deezer Hi-Fi. Or if you want a family account, you can spend the same money and get Deezer Family for the same 15 euros, which can be used by up to six people. The downside is that you only get MP3 quality instead of the 1644 CD-like quality. If you are a student, you can get a 50% discount. Deezer has apps for iOS, Android, macOS, Windows and Smart TVs. It's also compatible with Sonos, Amazon Alexa, Google Home, Xbox, Roku, Samsung Audio Systems and Chromecast, just to name a few. It has a very strong presence in smartwatches as Garmin, Fitbit, Android Wear and Apple Watch all support Deezer but with different features enabled on each system. Our next platform is Cobuzz, which is not necessarily a mainstream service yet, even though it's as old as Spotify and has been around since 2007. It has more than 60 million tracks now, loads of which are high quality and audiophile focused recordings and releases. There is no free plan and there are no low quality MP3s on offer here. So the first tier is the studio premiere for 20 euros paid monthly or for 180 euros a year, which makes it 15 euros a month with one month free trial. For this money you get mostly CD quality files, but there are a couple of million tracks available in high res 24 bit 192 kHz resolution to stream. The step up package is the studio sublime for 250 euros billed annually. With this subscription you can not only stream, but also buy and download high-res albums and songs from the Cobas catalog at a discounted price. Both the Studio Premiere and the Sublime tiers have a family option. The Premiere family subscription costs you either 35 euros a month or 350 billed annually. The Sublime family plan is only available as a yearly subscription for 500 euros. Both family plans include up to 6 individual accounts. Cobas has an app for all platforms, iOS, Android, macOS and Windows included. You can access it via a web player and it's available through Chromecast and some audio brands support Cobas Connect such as Name, Sonos and Blue Sound. Next up is Spotify, which I believe needs no introduction as it's one of the most popular streaming services. Its library consists of 50 million tracks and you can of course choose from multiple plans. There is Spotify Free, which is basically a radio with ads and low quality streams at a bitrate of only 160 kilobit per second. You can listen to charts, playlists and podcasts. If you want offline content and more control over your music and also step up in quality, you will need to subscribe for the Spotify Premium for 10 euros a month. The songs are still only available at up to 320 kilobits per second, but with Spotify that's the most you can get in terms of quality. There is a month of free trial though. For students the premium plan costs only 5 bucks, for couples there is the premium duo for 13 euros and for families with up to 6 people there is the family plan for 15. So Spotify got everyone covered. Apps are available for iOS, Android, Windows, Mac, there is a web player, it's compatible with smart TVs, wireless speakers, smartwatches, cars and who knows what else. Honestly, I cannot think of a smart or audio device which does not support Spotify Connect these days. And last but definitely not least, there is Tidal. It has over 70 million songs in its library, most of which are available in CD or even better quality. There is one month of free trial or you could get 4 months for only 4 euros altogether or at least that's a deal they offered to new subscribers recently. But either way, after the trial period, the premium plan costs 10 euro a month and the hi-fi plan costs 20. With the premium plan you get 320 kilobit per second mp3s only, but with the hi-fi plan you can stream in 1644 or or even up to 24 192 high res and you also get access to songs encoded in the Sony 360 reality audio format and Dolby Atmos music as well. For either 15 or 30 euros you can get the family plan for both tiers with up to 5 people included. There is a 50% discount for students. Tidal has all the mobile and desktop apps we talked about before. Tidal Connect is getting more and more popular in the audio industry, but it's not as widely available as Spotify Connect yet. Most manufacturers and smart devices support it though. Now let's see what else is there and what features you can expect from each platform other than music listening. Let's start with podcasts as these are more important to some people than music itself. There are countless podcast specific platforms out there, but if I had to choose from these 6 music streaming services for podcasts, I would pick Spotify. And it's not just because of Joe Rogan, but there are tons of other interesting and high quality podcasts in different categories such as health, 
Politics, Education, Comedy and loads of others. My other top pick for podcast would be Deezer with plenty shows in multiple different categories. Having a separate menu for podcasts on the main page shows how serious Deezer is about their podcasts. Amazon also has loads of podcasts but for some reason I couldn't see or find any of them on my account regardless if I was using the web player, their desktop app or the app on my iPad so it's hard to tell how good their selection is. Tidal also has some podcasts and even some video interviews and shows, but those are mostly music related, created by musicians or people working in the music industry, which can be quite interesting if you are into that kind of behind the scenes stuff, but there are no other topics discussed really such as sports or anything else really. It's quite niche and narrow focused, but it's the best at that particular topic. Apple Music itself doesn't have podcasts, but there is a separate podcast app on every iOS and macOS device, so your podcast needs are covered assuming you are either an iPhone, iPad or a Mac user. Cobuzz doesn't have any podcasts, but it offers some other unique features for music lovers, such as expertly curated playlists and over 500,000 album reviews, artist biographies and booklets. And there is a magazine with loads of articles on musicians, video interviews and even hi-fi gear reviews. The panoramas can enrich your knowledge of a certain genre, label or a musical era by mixing audio, video and written content together. When listening to music, you can access the credits of each song and album if you click on the info option. Altogether, Cobuzz is an excellent source of information for avid music lovers. My other favorite as far as unique features go is Tidal. It has tons of music videos and other videos like commentaries, where the artist walks through their own album track by track and talks about how each song was created and why. It's a great way to get to know more about your favorite songs and musicians. There are also some live concert videos, some feature films and documentaries as well. You can find tons of essays, interviews and articles on Tidal's website. Similar to Kobas, there are detailed credits of each album and song where you can find info on every single artist who was involved in creating the song you are listening to. You can also click on each person listed there to see what other projects they were involved in and this way you can learn more about the particular singer, bass player or producer if you'd like to. If you want to get a little bit closer to your favorite artist and learn as much as possible about them, you can easily do that through all of these features on Tidal. There are no videos on Deezer yet, but that should change in the future, especially if they want to keep up with the competition. So no videos there, but you can get lyrics for most of the songs which can come in handy sometimes. Apple Music has loads of music videos and some artist interviews as well. Amazon Music has recently launched its music video streaming feature, which is only available for paying subscribers. I couldn't find any videos to be honest on my Amazon Unlimited account here in Ireland and I couldn't find any answers yet to why that is either. Maybe I missed something so if any of you know how to make that work please leave a comment below. But back to functions that actually work, two of my favorite features of Amazon Music are the lyrics and the x-ray. Lyrics does what you think it does, it displays the lyrics on the screen during music playback. It works on both the mobile app and the desktop apps as well. So does the x-ray feature which allows you to bring up the credits and details of each song when listening to music. It's similar to Tidal's credits feature but without the option to click on each artist. You can also watch live streams through Twitch but this feature only works on smartphones. There is one feature that all streaming services have in common and that's offline playback. You can download your favorite songs and podcasts to your mobile phone or even your computer and listen to them on the way where you have no 4G, 5G or Wi-Fi connection. But keep in mind that the free plans of Amazon, Deezer and Spotify do not allow you to store offline content on your device so you have to pay for that feature. And as long as we talk about 4G and 5G, I know most of you won't have problems with streaming higher bitrate music all the time, but if you have a limited data plan on your phone or you simply cannot afford more expensive data plans, you can always set up your streaming app to use a lower bitrate version for streaming on mobile networks or simply download the higher quality files and store them on your phone. 
I'm sure there are other functions we did not discuss, but I believe I covered the most important differences between each streaming platform. And again, depending on when and where you watch this video, some features might not be available to you, or some new features have been already added which did not exist at the time of making this review. It makes sense, as streaming is one of the most rapidly evolving online services these days, so new features and regular updates are not only inevitable, but necessary too. Originally I wanted to talk about the user interface of each app in detail, but this video is long enough already. But let me just say that by default all apps have features in common, such as your own library with your favorite artists, playlists, albums or songs. You can search all libraries based on genre, mood, artist, album or tracks. There are curated playlists on every streaming service and you can get recommendations and custom playlists based on your own listening habits and search history. Of course there are some differences in the way each platform displays content or how you can explore new music and what each platform puts in front of you every time you log in, but generally speaking I found all platforms easy enough to use, even though there were some features I had to google because it was not obvious at first how to find podcasts on Amazon Music or videos on Apple Music for example. My favorite app to use is Tidal, but I've been using it every day for years now, so probably I'm just more familiar with it while most of the others were relatively new to me. Except for Spotify, which I've been using for years too, not on a daily basis though, but I still don't like it as much as I like Tidal. But that's just me. Your experience might vary depending on your preferences and what apps you use and on what device, and I believe that you can easily learn how to use any of the six music streaming services we discussed here today, and since you can get a free trial or a free plan with all of them, there is no reason for you not to try at least a few and figure out which works the best for you. One other thing, regardless of how big a library is, 50 or 60 million songs, there might be some songs or albums missing from one platform, which you can find on another. And since we all love different artists, albums and songs, I cannot really go through what you can or cannot find on each platform. So again, you will have to do it yourself and try to find the service which has all of your favorite songs in its library. And before I finish, let me just say a few words about sound quality. I didn't do any specific tests to compare every single one of these streaming services, but based on my experience during the last couple of weeks, I can say that in terms of audio quality, I prefer the ones with a library of high-res tracks like Kobas and Tidal. CD quality is probably most of us will ever need, but it's good to have a couple of hundred thousand songs in the highest quality possible today. The same goes for Amazon, even though I didn't try Amazon HD as I only used the unlimited plan with CD quality tracks, but again, that proved to be more than good enough for casual music listening. Deezer also offers CD quality streams with its most expensive plan, but there is no high res option and Spotify and Apple Music have no option to go above and beyond MP3 whatsoever. And there is nothing wrong with that, because most people could not tell the difference whether they are listening to MP3 or CD, especially if you use wireless earbuds which would compress the hell out of music anyway. But if you want to use your streaming service as a primary source for your home stereo, or if you use better than average wired headphones or desktop monitors, then you will be able to tell the difference between the lower quality streams of Spotify and the higher bitrate streams of Kobas for sure. So if you only listen to music on the go, you can easily get away with low tier subscriptions and save some money, but if you want the absolute best, then you have to pay up and subscribe to one of the more expensive plans. Whether the extra cost is worth it or not, it's totally up to you. As you can see, there are plenty streaming options out there for us music enthusiasts, and I didn't even talk about all the streaming services available in this video. I'm sure some of you will ask me about those I didn't mention, but believe me that one of these six services can give you pretty much anything you need, regardless of where you live and how much you want to spend on your music. You have many options from free subscriptions for casual or background listening, all the way up to the most high-end, audiophile approved, high-resolution streaming with loads of extra information and unique features. You can try all of them for free and then decide which one suits your needs the best and cancel the others anytime, so there is nothing you can lose really. I highly recommend giving a go to at least one or two of the higher-end offerings so you can hear and experience the difference yourself and see if it is worth the extra cost or not. The good thing is that you can not only cancel anytime, but you can downgrade too if you find the price too high, so again, there is nothing to lose. 
So that was my short overview of the six most popular music streaming services. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, let me know what is your choice of streaming service and why in the comments below. Next week, we will be back with some more hardware reviews, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.